I've got two nice problems from the Malaysian Mathematical Olympiad today. These come from the 2010 edition. So let's look at the first one. We want to determine how many pairs of natural numbers, we'll call them A and B, satisfy the following two conditions. So A plus B is less than or equal to 100, and then A plus 1 over B over 1 over A plus B is equal to 10. So given this second condition, which is obviously an equation, we would probably like to make it a little bit simpler by multiplying by something so that this complicated fraction on the left-hand side is a little bit more manageable. And we can do that by multiplying by the denominator, and that will straight away give us a plus one over b is equal to 10 over a plus 10b. Now we've got two things that we could do here. We could maybe solve for a in terms of b or b in terms of a. And I think the level of difficulty will be about the same, but I'm gonna solve for a in terms of b, which means I wanna translate this from some sort of rational equation in a to a quadratic equation in a. And I can do that by multiplying this entire equation by a. Let's see what that gives us. That'll give us a squared plus a over b equals 10 plus 10ab. Next, we'll use standard quadratic equation type strategies to solve this. I'll move everything with an a to the left-hand side, the number to the right-hand side, and then I'll complete the square. So that's gonna leave me with a squared plus one over b minus 10b times a. There, I did a little bit of grouping as I moved the 10ab over, and that needs to be equal to 10. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna complete the square. The standard strategy there is to take half of this quantity and square it, but I can write half of that quantity as one over two b minus five b. Like I said, I need to square it. Over on the right-hand side, I'll just write what it looks like after squaring it. So that's gonna be plus one over four b squared, and then minus five and then plus 25b squared. So let's see where that minus five comes from. That comes from five b times one over two b, but we have two copies of that. Next up, we can see that this 10 and this minus five will cancel to be a plus five, which is really motivating because perhaps that's gonna factor just like this thing boiled out. Okay. So by our construction, we can factor the left-hand side of this equation as a plus one over two b minus five b, all squared. And then by the hint that was built into the problem, we can factor the right-hand side of this equation as one over two b plus five b, quantity squared. Next, we'll take the square root. We only need to take the positive square root because we're working over natural numbers. That'll leave us with a plus one over two b minus five b equals one over two b plus five b. We can cancel the one over two b from both sides of the equation, leaving us with a equals 10 b. Now we wanna run through all of the possibilities for b that will let a plus b be less than or equal to 100. So let's see what possibilities we have. B can be equal to one, then A is equal to 10, their sum is 11. B could be two, three, four, all the way up to nine. If B is nine, then A is 90. 90 plus nine is 99, but if B is anything outside of that range from one to nine, then it won't work. So that tells us that there are nine total solutions satisfying the condition that was given. So let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at our second equation. So we just got done solving this first problem, now we're ready to look at the second. So we wanna determine real numbers satisfying this kind of complicated exponential slash logarithmic equation. So we've got 2010 to the log base 10 of x equals 11 to the log base 10 of one plus three plus five all the way up to 4019. So looking at this, there should probably be some simplification of this sum of really odd integers. And there is, and I think it's a fairly well-known formula, but we'll wave our hands at a proof really quickly. So I'll maybe write this as a lemma, 
And that is for all natural numbers n, we have one plus three plus five, all the way up to two n minus one. So that's gonna be the first n odd numbers is equal to n squared. So again, like I said, we're not do a thorough proof, but we will wave our hands at one. So we'll consider this by induction. So our base case would be n equals one, but notice one is equal to one squared. So we're okay in that case. And then by an induction hypothesis, we would suppose this is true for an arbitrary k bigger than or equal to one. In other words, we have one plus three plus five plus all the way up to 2k minus one is equal to k squared. So that's our induction hypothesis. Then in our induction step, we'll take this equation, which we have assumed to be true, and then add the next odd number to both sides. So that's gonna be plus 2k plus one. But now we can rewrite this left-hand side as one plus three plus five, all the way up to two times k plus one minus one. So I've written that so we can really see it's the k plus first odd number. And now I can factor this right-hand side as k plus one quantity squared. But that's exactly what we need in order to show that this is true via induction. But now notice that this 4019 is in fact the same thing as two times 2010 minus one. So what we have here is the sum of the first 2010 odd integers. By our lemma, we know that that means that this sums up to 2010 squared. So that's good news because that's gonna be easier to work with. So let's rewrite this equation now. We have 2010 to the log base 10 of x is equal to 11 to the log base 10 of 2010 squared. Now let's use some logarithm rules here. We can take this two, bring it down, and it will multiply the logarithm out front. And so that's from a standard logarithm rule that log a to the b is b times log of a, which is true for any base of logarithm. Next, we see that this is 11 squared to the power of log base 10 by some exponent rules. So here we have, this is 121 to the power of log base 10 of 2010. So that gives us a much more manageable equation. Now we can go from here by taking a logarithm with any base, but I think it's easiest if we take a log base 10 of both sides of this equation. So again, using that logarithm rule, we'll be left with on the left-hand side, log base 10 of x times log base 10 of 2010. Then on the right-hand side, we'll be left with log base 10 of 2010 times log base 10 of 121. Now, canceling some stuff from both sides of the equation, in fact, this, we will see that log base 10 of x is the same thing as log base 10 of 121, but that means that x is equal to 121. So that means we've solved both of these equations. And before we stop, maybe I wanna mention that one of my favorite comedy YouTubers is from Malaysia, it's Nigel Ng. And I think it'd be pretty interesting if my viewers reached out on his channel, and then we could do some kind of crazy comedy and math like mashup video. Okay, that's a good place to stop.